This is the replacement stock head unit for the Mazda MPV. When I bought this car, it came with a Japanese head unit, which um, was no good. It had um, nothing in English. You couldn't change the language because it had no other language installed. Um, and the radio frequencies would only go up to a certain amount. The, it was connected to a rear view camera, um, but that camera was, the lens was all fogged up and a bit, a bit messed up. And it wasn't connected to the passenger camera because on that mirror over there, there's a passenger camera which points towards the front wheel because you're quite high up in this car so like getting into my old carport here I can't necessarily see easily whether I'm going to hit that wall or not or especially if I'm turning in from the road so having this installed was the easiest way to get everything done so replacing the default unit here um, with one I've purchased off Trade Me, which I'll include in the link. This unit is not Android Auto, but it is um, everything I pretty much needed it to be. Um, it has sat nav, it has Bluetooth, uh, everything else um, has a USB connection in the glove box for a memory key. Um, there is also another micro USB connection here, um, mini or micro, I can't remember which one is which. Um, and it is touchscreen, so there is um, multiple screens on here and it can be controlled from. The controls on the steering wheel so I can switch through the units. The main reason for getting another one though was that I needed to hook up all the cameras that were connected to this car without having to do any wiring. So, turn that down. One of the main things was I didn't know how to get the unit to change to different um, inputs but having this one installed I don't really have any problem anymore. I also had a dash cam mounted under here just a standard basic one um, and it supports that too so by default if I go home if I want to see the passenger side camera I can go to um, I think it's on the home screen AV in. It's AV in there we go so AV in that's looking down at the drowsel not very clear on my phone but um, that is down there so I can see it. I'm not actually gonna hit the wall so it's quite obvious there's a bit of a gap there which is always handy to see and if you're pulling up against the curb then it's always nice to know what's down there at the same time. If I put the car into reverse then it will switch to the reverse camera which um, the old stock one was left behind and this new one was added in um, so it just sits next to it and it's angled in a way that I like it so that it's uh, down there and that is pretty much the edges of the car it's wide angle lens so I tested it by putting some things on the floor point blank right below the car and you can see them uh, through the fisheye lens and then if I was reversing doing a kind of you know a typical I'm being lazy 58 point turn into this carport as soon as I go back into drive it'll just go back into whichever camera it was before so once I've selected that camera, I can just go backwards and forwards between the two or just constantly cycle through the mode on the dashboard. Um, at any point, um, go through the modes on the dashboard, say whether I'm getting to the radio or anything else. So if a uh, USB key has adventure time on it, so uh, there's a radio. And any of the other screens that are on there, if I go home, I can do uh, the sat nav, but I can also go right and select DVR, and that's permanently hooked up to the camera up here, I don't know if I wave my hands up, there you go, there's my fingers. Um, so all three inputs are connected to this one head unit without me having to buy any additional hardware other than the unit itself. Um, didn't need to put any switches for the power for those units, it's all hooked up through this one. So um, I think it was a very good purchase and um, very cheap, including installation. So I'm going to get the same thing put in um, the other car we have, um, which is just a Toyota Corolla, it's a spare car if we need to um, one of us ha one of us has to drive somewhere but it also takes the child seat which was the reason for getting this big thing um, that one has no need for a passenger camera so it'll just have the two it'll just have the reversing camera and I'll put the same dash camera on there as well because uh, I don't need anything too fancy but yeah that's it that's this unit so it's uh, everything I needed to do and thanks to the people who gave me suggestions and help online about uh, hooking up the default cameras and replacing the default head unit as well um, only other thing that I have left to do, uh, you can notice that at the moment, while it does point to the front um, steering wheel here, again, you can't see very clearly, on, there's more fault of my phone, the picture is great on the screen. Um, it would be nice if I could see the front corner of the, the car. Um, it doesn't quite get that far. Um, so what, I, what I'm aiming to do is find a way to go to that camera that's in the bottom of that mirror 
and tilt it up slightly. I haven't figured out how to get in there. There's no obvious way. The only 